The Ballroom at the Edge of the Universe by Neon Opal Alan Rickman stepped forward to the most stunning blonde he had ever seen and asked, May I have this dance? I am Alan Rickman. Yes, you may. Legolas of the Woodland Realm. Pleased to make your acquaintance, he said, kissing the offered hand. Your hair and eyes are captivating, as is your smile and grasp. He nodded towards their hands, firmly entwined. This man intrigued him. He was reasonably sure he was human, or very similar, and he had umthing of the rugged Aragorn about him, but more manicured facial hair, yet with the height and grace of an elf. Have we not met before? About a century in the future, I play Professor Snape of Hogwarts Academy of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Perhaps it is the cloak or stance you remember, or my voice. That was the thing about these transdimensional parties. They got so confusing, Alan, though. A wizard friend brought me here. Gandalf, Legolas, though, always took him to the strangest places, but my, was this man attractive and well-mannered, and did have an enchanting voice. The wizarding thing must somehow be the connection. He pulled the man a bit closer as they seemed to glide across the floor. Swaying to the unseen music, turning quite a few heads their way with their skillful movements. The reflective multicolour light glittering off the glass greenhouse-like structure of the ballroom and its shimmering floor that looked like water but was sold. Endless reflections of colour and the outside seemed to shift from day to night at intervals. I'm sorry this will sound rude, but what are you? Alan asked his partner, who matched his height and had pionted ears, and was as graceful as a prima ballerina. He looked into the eyes, which were the iciest blue he had ever seen while still being friendly, and they matched the long tunic and leggings that were work with white boots. What? Legolas looked back, the delightful, questioning smile, perplexed but realizing th where they were. Oh, I am an elf. I realize that an elf does not mean the smay thing in all places. Quite right, in Harry Potter they were tiny, ill-formed, orchid creatures. When I will be a wizard, all the best families have them. Have? Possess? Elves are servants there, but I can tell not in your world. No, I am among the nobility in my world, and even those other than myself are a kind of royalty with magic prowess. They shall have magic too, but bound by tradition of servitude nearly unbreakable. This elf was charming and desirable. Alan couldn't wait to get the clothing off. He slid his hand up his partner's back to the edge of the long hair and smiled with a sigh. Legloas put his hand on the man's head and brought him in for a kiss. Here was no hesitation. Alan led Legolas off to one of the many secluded small chambers he knew were here, if you were so inclined and knew where to find them, kind of like the Room of Requirement. His new lover did not seem to want to allow clothing removal, as their kiss grew more intense now in private. Alan had learned at these sort of things with so many bearing traditions, it was best to follow your lover and insist on nothing for the best times to be had, which they would be. He removed his own shirt and was content to trace his lover's ears and play with the long glowing hair as his cock was thoroughly sucked. The elves there must be powerful indeed, or they would have been turned into sex slaves, he was sure. In no time at all, he was being pressed back against the wide couch as he let Legolas position himself carefully in the dim light and billowing wispy curtains that decorated the room. Legolas was unsure this man knew his gender, many creatures found him androgynous. Perhaps Is was greedy, but he didn't know their costumes and didn't want to be refused. He pulled him in and kissed him. Trust me, he said, and it was not a question. But statement. Anything lovely? 
Thy coupled according to Legolas' plan, he straddled the man and managed to keep layers of cloth between the parts he was unsure about. Alan tried to pull him down, but the elf moistened no, and it felt so good as his shaft was engulfed, he could only moan, not complain. The creamy skin, and above him, he began to murmur some poetry in his melodic voice as they gasped. Legolas, I don't know what your kind are, but this is magnificent. Oh! Legolas bent in a careful way, trailing his hair across the exposed area of the chest and placed a few kisses on his lips and cheese neck. Alan's hands stayed on his hips and waist where placed, but he moaned and squirmed as the hair and started to murmur in elvish, sweet nothings in his ear, letting his breath out in controlled ways. As their motions increased in pace, until the final climax of Elv and Man could be held of no longer. As Legoas sat fully upright again in these final moments, Alan grasping the hair he could reach and pressed his hips down as he thrust up a final time. Legolas extracted himself and lay his head on Alan's chest, allowing his hair to be stroked as there regained their breath and another poems was murmured, but Alan, who seemed to have possibly more breath control. After a time spent floating in bliss, they tidied themselves and went out. The things are hard to tell or know, but I hope we might meet some place like this again sometime, Alan said. Then Legolas quickly bid farewell and disappeared in the crowded ballroom. Tea. Ah, said Gandalf, I see you have spent time with Legolas. He is ever the charmer and as known for seduction as you yourself. Alan looked at this strange old man who he was sure was a wizard like Dumbledore. What? He responded, flabbergasted. Legolas is a he? Of course. Are you daft? You just slept with him, it's obvious. The end. The <laughs> end.